continuing now in verse 4 of chapter 2 of Ephesians. So God, who is being wealthy in mercy, God is rich in giving active relief to others because of withholding merited judgment or punishment from them. God doesn't bestow punishment on those who deserve to be punished. Let's read on. So God is being wealthy in mercy on account of much love. And of course this word love comes from that Greek word agape, God's kind of love. God has a lot of his own love, his godly love. So God who is being wealthy in mercy on account of much love bestowed mercy towards us. God withheld merited judgment from us. Who? Us, the people who are holy and believing in Christ Jesus. God did not bestow punishment on us who deserve to be punished. He gave us active relief. Even us, Paul emphasizes, who are dead to the falling asides, just like verse 1, we are now dead to the falling asides, he, God, made us alive together. God caused us to become alive or living. He gave us life together or in conjunction, jointly with the Christ. That's the promised Messiah, the anointed one. Our life now, our true life, is the Holy Spirit life that we have received. The spirit of Christ in us is our life, our true spiritual life. God made us alive together with the Christ, with or by or in grace, unmerited or undeserved favor, which we saw back in chapter 1. You are at the present time in the standing and state of having already been saved, and you continue saved. That's what that word saved means. It means we have already been saved, and we're still saved. We remain saved. Why? Because we receive that gift of Holy Spirit, the deposit of the Spirit within us. We have been made safe to God from sins and their consequences, from destruction. And in verse 6, And he, God, raised us up together. So God caused us to rise up in conjunction with Christ. So again, we are jointly with Christ. And he caused us to sit down together. God made us to be seated in conjunction with Christ you know, with each other and with Christ jointly, all together, where? In the heavenlies. Of course, again, we saw that in chapter 1, but that word heavenlies is a plural word and it gives great emphasis to the word. The word heavenlies. And it is used metaphorically referring to God's spirit realm. That's all that is upon or pertaining to God within the sphere of action of all that pertains to God's heavenly or spirit realm. So God did this in Christ Jesus, within the cause and sphere of action, the character and attributes of Christ Jesus. So at the present time, we have not yet, of course, received our new spiritual bodies like Christ received when God raised them up alive from being dead. But we have received that promise of the Spirit, the promised Spirit within us, that Spirit of Christ in us. And that's how we became limbs or members of the one spiritual body of Christ, Christ's body of people, holy people. We now belong to Christ. In verse 7, it continues, For the purpose and result that God would point out or indicate display from within himself during the ages, emphatically and specifically the coming ages, that are the lifetimes or the durations of life that are in motion on the way. They are coming into existence. 
Of course, that's referring to the future ages, beginning with the event of the Lord Jesus Christ returning to gather all holy people together with him in the air, away from the earth, that begins the day of the Lord. So it's for the purpose and result that God would point out the super-throwing wealth of his grace, the equality and state of riches of his unmerited or undeserved favor, that's what grace is, which is surpassing to a greater degree, is a throwing or casting it for an extreme distance or measure past the limits that it has already attained. The extreme richness of God's grace in benevolence that would be within kindness, or whereby God is going to supply what is appropriately needed for use in this specific situation. And where is he going to display or point this out, the super-throwing greatness of his wealth in benevolence? On us, or down upon us, all holy people in Christ Jesus. Again, God will do this on or for us holy people in Christ Jesus within the cause and sphere of action, character and attributes of Christ Jesus. Now let's remember what we read in chapter 1 where Paul wrote the following regarding what God has done for the Christ. So in chapter 1 it said, God inworked the strongness of his strength in the Christ, having raised him up out from dead people, and having caused him to sit down in his right side in the heavenlies, super above all rulership and authority and ability and lordship and every name being named, not only in this age, but also in the age being about to come. And he, God, subjected all things under his Christ's feet. And he, God, gave him who was head over all things, that's Christ, to the church, which is his body, which is the fullness of the one filling his body with all things in all people, that's all holy people. Now here in chapter 2, we just read what God has done for all of us, for all holy people. God made us alive together with the Christ. We're talking about the spirit category. God made alive together with the Christ. With grace, you are having been saved. And he raised us up together. And he caused us to sit down together in the heavenlies in Christ Jesus, in order that he may point out in the ages, what ages? The coming on ages. Point out the super-throwing wealth of his grace in benevolence on us in Christ Jesus. 